Morning all. Two of my favourite grandmasters played each other in the European Cup two days ago. Hikaru Nakamura, Nakamura, two seven eight six USA number one against Grandmaster Simon Williams, who's uh, England rank fourteen two four nine six. So Hikaru is kind of super grandmaster at two seven eight six. Simon Williams is uh, just grandmaster. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Simon is a very good uh, video annotator as well and I've played both Nakamura and Simon on the ICC. So let's see this encounter. D4, E6 and they transpose into the French defence and a rather surprising decision from Hikaru, the exchange French, which my good friend Paul Georgiou, by the way, is... Um, I'm going to help me do a dual commentary video pretty soon on the Exchange French. Probably in the next few weeks you'll see an Exchange French video. And he seems to have discovered that actually there's quite a lot of lines which give advantage to white. So I, <laughs> I hate to say about the symmetrical pawn structure and not creating imbalances from it, but, uh, but there are ways to pressure black. And we're going to see one in this game. So Knight F3 doesn't look mega exciting <laughs> at the moment. After C6, Bishop D3, Bishop D6, Hikaru castles. Now after Knight E7, you'd think uh, positionally that if you go for a C4 plan here, uh, what is to stop black from isolating the Queen's pawn and making use of D5 as a good blockade square? Uh, so okay but nevertheless c4 is played so maybe it has some strategic risks but on the other hand it's putting black under pressure if black's going to get a blockade on d5 later where are the knights pointing they're pointing at d5 not e5 and it seems that e5 might be a very key square for white to allow black to get the blockade but make use of that e5 square so let's see both you know strategies in action here after castles Hikaru uh, now plays h3, preventing the pin. Bishop g4. Okay, and now Simon Williams goes for this strategic plan. He's going to reinforce d5 with mighty blockade, uh, with tempo, tempo driven blockade, because after d takes c4, bishop takes, he goes knight d7. So he's going to get a tempo on that bishop and get a mighty blockade on d5. So, what is Hikaru doing? Where is the compensation? After knight c3, knight b6, you could argue that the compensation after bishop b3 is the neglect of the e5 square. These knights are just directed at d5 blockade. Does white have a small advantage? I'm not going to ask an engine here. Maybe the second second pass will get technical evaluations. But it's interesting. Okay, and this bishop is, is pointing at a sensitive soft spot. h6. And then we see rook e1 reinforcing e5 control. And is black really going to contest this e file? Simon plays bishop f5, and we see e5 being made use of now with knight e5. So these knights, as I say, they're geared up for d5 and not for challenging the e5 square. Now, a concession really, giving up the dark square bishop. Simon plays bishop takes e5, after rook takes e5. Okay, there's pressure, but what about the isolated queen's pawn? What about the frontal attack? Maybe doubling on the d pawn. Queen d7 seems to prepare to double as well as supporting f5, freeing the knight. Queen f3 putting more pressure on f5, so the knight is still tied down to, to help protect f5. The bishop moves back out of the way. Queen e4, very interesting move. If bishop takes them. Rook takes e7, perhaps. So maybe it's designed to discourage a rook move. Uh, so we get the blockade, the almighty blockade on d5. But can white now make use of you know the new trump card, the dark square bishop, as well as the e5 uh, square, as well as the e file? Well, knight takes d5, the blockade is recharged. And now we see bishop c2, immediate threats against the king what to do about h7 it looks as though you know g6 is totally unplayable bishop takes h6 so f5 another concession forced and look at that e5 square now 
without any way of kicking anything off e5 that easily well with a pawn now that f5 is committed it's blocking in the bishop so it seems it seems that uh, a few concessions have been generated here from black queen e2 okay what to do about the bishop if it drops back then bishop takes f5 Simon plays rook f6 and we see now bishop d2 preparing to treble on that e file very simple plan knight b6 and we see the trebling okay bishop c4 attacking the queen queen e3 okay what are the immediate threats here after queen e3 and you might think well is knight d5 possible I think that's something we should check after in this position uh, black played queen f7 and now the bishop was kicked and it goes to d5 okay and it seems okay black still got what he's been playing for all, all along this d5 blockade but what a huge cost f5 is weak the e file is dominated by white there's an entry point on e7 and that's made use of now rook e7 <laughs> by the way please please do not play the exchange french as a result of this video i do not want to be the person popularizing the exchange french sorry i should have said that at the outset of the video it just happens to be that nakamura has collected trump cards through concessions of black in this game and it seemed okay it was a sensible idea to go for the for the d5 blockade but it does seem to have backfired at this point <laughs> okay with a rook on the seventh domination of the e file the bishop pair it seems the isolated queen's pawn is not particularly uh, relevant but the blockade is affording some pressure on g2 so queen g6 threatens mate the car spots that uh, threat of mate with f3 parrying it and then we see also on the cards is now making use of the pin is probably on the cards with g4 it's not that outrageous um, but um, things like that are, are now evident also this pawn uh, might be for the taking soon as well so Simon tries rook f7 the rook is taken queen takes and now queen e5 putting pressure on f five and again there's no easy way of protecting f five uh, you might think well maybe rook f eight so what would be wrong with rook f eight I think we need to check that out in the second pass it looks like a plausible move initially but does it have some snags yes sorry I was looking at this last night there is a big snag uh, with rook f8 it's just bishop b4 yes the dark square bishop can kick that rook uh, so this probably explains why black is um, going to uh, try and generate some counterplay on the qu on the queen side here making use of the blockade eyeing b3 now uh, and, the, and this pawn chain if he can sort of do something with this pawn chain so he tries a5 giving up a pawn over here and Hikaru goes up now in material pawn up okay and if a4 now I guess Bishop e6 check uh, would would be okay to get rid of that Bishop so probably this next move is designed against Bishop e6 King f7 and now we see uh, Hikaru securing trying to score the g6 square he plays h4 so the plan is like h5 and bishop g6 we see a4 undermining the pawn chain liberating the rook a bit more but um Hikaru just makes this a pawn sack now he plays h5 he's giving up his b pawn very exciting game a takes a takes the b pawn isn't taken here it uh, looks fairly dangerous to take on b3 here and probably even without any bishop g6 tactics the knight looks loose on b6 so maybe just rook uh, b1 might be dangerous but then knight c4 so it's not so clear cut but maybe taking on b7 after um, but we'll, we'll look in depth after the game uh, in the second pass 
but uh, for the moment king f6 well kind of implies that there's going to be no rook b7 as check anyway but again the pawn is offered as a pawn sacrifice with bishop d3 and also of course he's, he's hitting the bishop not giving um, uh, time to do much else he has to do something about the bishop it kind of just drops it back to d3 so not anywhere else anyway c2 there's rook a2 so he's giving up b3 okay and now it's white's turn again to do something uh, with this uh, breath here without any hassle from black at this moment in time with the bishop pair he plays bishop f4 and this is starting to look quite dangerous for the black king uh, with threats like bishop e5 introduced or maybe uh, bishop g6 then bishop e5 uh, to win g7 just to win g7 if not uh, uh, menacing checks bishop c4 challenging the bishop and the bishop installs itself now on g6 okay now after knight d7 which does stop bishop e5 unfortunately uh, the king is locked out of retreating to f7 the king is actually finding itself in uh, unfortunately a mating net can you spot white's next move in this position if i give you 10 seconds starting from now okay actually well the move played looks strong but also okay bishop g3 was the move played threatening bishop h4 but i guess also if we looked at this with post-mortem bishop d6 might also be the same sort of idea which looks powerful but uh, bishop g3 was played the king tries to get out of uh, being mated with king g5 but now the final move can you guess it if i give you 10 seconds starting from now okay rook e4 and this threatens bishop h4 mate and there's actually nothing black can do about it the mating that's woven can delay the inevitable with a check but then king h2 and then what bishop h4 is coming okay remember this is not an advert for the exchange french please do not go out and play the exchange french <laughs> it's a lot of openings in 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 the hands of, of of super grandmasters become very very dangerous weapons super grandmasters by definition uh, are very very resourceful and um okay let's let's go through this um this again so hikaru um with with, with uh, an engine inspection of the game white has a nagging advantage now i suspect i suspect the evaluation is going to drop down after c4 because of the blockade opportunities i have a s small suspicion c4 isn't mentioned it's aggressive an aggressive move it's giving black stuff to do basically okay no it's it's okay <laughs> b3 and c3 but c4 where is c4 as a move if i do another line nope night we've got b3 rookie one no c4 is is a candidate here <laughs> okay so c4 so white has an advantage h3 is played c5 and b3 also interesting okay but c5 releases the tension it's not the sort of move you usually want to do but on the other hand it does demonstrate this blockade idea if the engine likes c5 what would be the follow-up though for white not really sure so this this is sort of controversial here again with h3 just allowing black for, for the blockade strategy to play h3 and there is a, sw a small evaluation slip up you see that small evaluation slip up so basically um nakamura is thinking yes give black d5 but on the other hand resources are tied up for the d5 blockade and those resources are not contesting e5 so we see fr from the emergence of the plans here white's slightly better anyway overall but uh, when we see the fir very first concession of e5 giving up the dark square bishop i bet the evaluation goes up here 
Knight d7 maybe to challenge e5, go, going away from the blockade strategy, is what the engine recommends. But this first concession instead is is increasing, I think, White's advantage slightly. But the d pawn looks vulnerable at this stage. It looks very vulnerable. Okay. Now queen e4, clever move here, queen e4, a precise move, virtually pinning that bishop, putting pressure on e6, and forcing the blockade actually to shield e6. Otherwise, you know, there's three pieces on it. So knight bd5, white takes on d5. Now this switch to the attack, white's got the advantage, forcing another concession. The, the, tr the strategy's worked. So who would have thought? You know, giving giving up like blockade is actually letting the opponent tie up resources in a way. You could look at it like that. A different angle on on blockades here. So queen e2. Okay, and uh, rook f6 is becoming awkward. So rook a e8 is preferred here apparently. So rook f6 is becoming awkward. Or knight c7. So the advantage is is uh, going slightly up for white now. After this, especially knight b6. So instead, knight c7 or b6 mentioned. Just on brief analysis, but I think black's position is already very difficult. White controls that e file, which the sadistic French defense exchange players will love. You know the e file. They'll probably love this game with the e file domination. <laughs> Rook e1, e file domination. Oh dear, oh dear. So bishop c4, queen. E3, keeping the E file domination rather sadistically. But um, yeah, if knight d5, that was interesting. Why not knight d5? We said we look at that. Queen g3, switching the queen over here. What does that actually threaten? Unusual move, say I prompted. Queen a3 and bishop b4. Bishop b4 again. Or b3. If the bishop's kicked over there, bishop c1. Not really sure what the plan is for white here, apart from just holding e5 for for a while longer. Maybe trying to encourage black to play f4 because that would just weaken that diagonal. So let's let's go back anyway. Queen e3, queen f7 was played, and now white's advantage is going huge now after b3, more than a pawn. Okay, kicking the queen, letting uh, this crude mate threat happen. Extinguished. And now, okay, rook takes f7 was played. Apparently, queen f4 it might be technically stronger for some reason, but uh, rook takes f7 was played. Let's have a quick look at queen f4. Just out of interest, what what is queen f4 about? Not entirely sure, but let's, so let's go back anyway for the game continuation. Rook takes, and we saw queen e5. So white still firmly got an advantage here. So, if we look at this, just to confirm, rook f8 was just not pliable here to defend the pawn. Bishop b4. If knight d7 attacking the queen, queen c7. And now black's getting in a total mess, I guess. Maybe just taking on b7 or f5. f5 may be better. Black's in a total mess. So if we go back, yeah, this 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 is all backfired. This this blockade strategy is backfired. White has the bishop pair, um, an extra pawn. Actually, what was this? It seems queen takes f5 was actually almost a major inaccuracy to queen d6. Queen d6 threatens rook e7, I guess. If rook f8, then bishop takes a5. Let's go with say a4 then. Is it the power of rook e7, the rook on the seventh? And queen e5 here. And if takes. Well, this is a dominating position. And um, with the rook on the seventh. Okay, so may maybe a small inaccuracy. Queen takes f5. But still, white's like a, a pawn up. And he can use that as a pawn sacrifice, which is what he does. He sacrifices. B three shortly. So after Bishop D three, Bishop takes here. White's in the driving seat again. Maybe taking the pawns a big mistake here. 
Um, what can black do, though? I think black is in trouble, actually, the more we look at this. So bishop takes b3, and again, the, the bishop pair is, is becoming uh, a mating net weapon all of a sudden. Not just kind of an abstract theoretical bishop pair, but no, a mating net weapon. Very concrete application. Just weaving the mating net with the two bishops here. Okay, and the final move, rook e4. So, um, whatever you do, please don't start playing the exchange French defense. I just thought it was an interesting game. Um, but, um, okay. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.